Pittsburgh Steelers fans, if you're wondering what in the world is an AccraSure Stadium, I'm here to help you. I'm Chris Carter here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We'll talk about what what got Heinz Field's name to change, explaining all the details, as well as some other questions from our callers here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube video, on our YouTube video, YouTube channel, excuse me, to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes. We got an important episode today to break down what the heck happened on Monday with the Steelers naming rights. Now, it all it, it was leaking out coming into Monday about that, that hey, Hines, Hines it was kind of talked about for years, too, that Hines was not going to be able to pony up for the kind of money that the Pittsburgh Steelers would probably be looking for for the naming rights for Hines Field. Um, and it led to this basically being known it's not going to be Hines Field anymore. It's going to be Acrashore Stadium. And if you're, you're a Steelers fan, you probably saw this, you probably complained about it on Twitter or in our, our Locked on Steelers Facebook group. I feel you. It's not a cool name. It doesn't inspire anything. There's no Pittsburgh connections to it. Um, but let's break this down step by step so we understand all the elements of this so that you can complain with your full heart's content. But also, I want to give some pushback on, on some complaints. First and foremost, Acrishore is an insurance company based in Michigan. It's a very big company, and it uh, recently acquired a company, and this is Good reporting from Brooke Pryor of ESPN. They recently acquired a company called Tulco, which is a company that was founded by a Steelers minority on owner by the name of Thomas Thomas Toll. Thomas Toll now sits on the chairman of, of the Acrisure Technology Group uh, part of the company. And that is the connection there that you can see where Toll probably, not probably, definitely played a part in in making this happen. But the deal as reported by several people, including Jerry Dulek of the Pittsburgh post Gazette is that there was, it was a $150 million deal over the next 15 years, basically $10 million per year. Acrisure will be paying for the naming rights. That is a steep climb from what it was around like a 53 or $57 million deal that Heinz paid the last time around for it. Simply because when the Steelers last came to an agreement about the naming rights, it was back when people didn't, put much stock into that but now there's a lot of money in having your name on an nfl state uh, stadium or arena so there are things that there, there are things that are going to be attained and the steelers you know the steelers were at a place where they wanted to make money from this and make the much of the kind of money to uh you know invest back into their stadium and invest into other parts of the, uh, other parts of their organization um in ways that they couldn't before because of the agreement they had with Heinz at the time. And frankly, if you're sitting there wondering, well, why didn't Heinz pony up? Heinz is not the company that if you're, if you're not familiar with Pittsburgh businesses, especially if you're not uh, in Pittsburgh, you might not understand the dynamics, but Heinz really hasn't been that big of a company in Pittsburgh for quite some time. Uh, I'd even say in like in the late nineties, they basically started transitioning out of Pittsburgh and not be, you know, they, have, they don't make ketchup here anymore. Um, so that's a, uh, that's part of the concern there. Um, but, uh, when we, when we talk, when we're talking about Heinz as a company, there's history because of, uh, John H Heinz and the Heinz history center and all of the elements that were in Pittsburgh. And that history, you know, is still something to be proud of, but as far as a company paying for naming rights, that's just how the business works. And the Steelers were one, you know, we're saying, Hey, we're getting this kind of an offer from this kind of a company. We're going to go with that. You know, we're not going to turn away, you know, an extra hundred million dollars or so based off of, you know, you know, just 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 based off of the the, the naming rights. Now, I do think it's interesting that it was noted uh, by uh, the company, you know, Heinz, that uh, they are still working to be partners with the Pittsburgh Steelers and that there are there are going to be agreements that are coming out soon. So for those people who are sitting there like, what about the ketchup bottles that pour red into the score zone or the, the, the scoreboard when they're in the when the Steelers are in the red zone? 
that might end up staying. Who knows? They might they might say like, hey, just keep those in there. We'll pay for those rights for it to be the Heinz Field Red Zone or some you know or the Heinz Red Zone of Acker Shore Stadium, something along those lines. Um, but bottom line, this was a this was a, a you know a, a financial situation. Heinz couldn't pony up to the level that a lot of other companies are are ponying up to professional teams to get their names on arenas. It's just part of part part of sports business. It's how it happens. Yes, the name does, does not inspire much if you're if you're a Steelers fan or a Pittsburgher because because at least with Heinz you were thinking like oh there's pride there because Heinz has a Pittsburgh connection. Um, even though now it's you know you know over the past several years it's been owned by Kraft and it's not exactly as much of a Pittsburgh company as it used to be back when you know people my my parents were growing up. So. I, I get people dismay there and I even feel it, you know, saying that, like I was saying, like, man, this, this name does not roll off the tongue. It doesn't sound cool. Um, it doesn't like it doesn't inspire much. But again, at the same time, you'll get over it if the Steelers are winning in Acreshore Stadium. And you may. And again, people are going to say, oh, I'm still going to call it Heinz Field. I feel you. I'm probably going to call it Heinz Field a lot, you know, just on this show, just off the strength of, you know, I'm going to forget that it's that it's already changed name in my subliminal consciousness when I'm just thinking things out. Um, Cause I don't write a script that I'm reading from you. I'm, I, I have my points from over here that I, that I go from point to point on, but uh, I, you know, I, I think that it's just one of those things where I, I understand why people are upset, but I think this is something that Steelers fans are going to get over relatively quickly, um, or at least not care as much about it. It'll be something that that's put in the back. But I do, I did think it was funny how a lot of people were talking about, well, what about this or what about that? So I did put in our locked on Steelers Facebook group suggestions. What did people have for suggestions for what the field should have been named? I'm just going to go through a few of them before we go to our next break. Cause this is, this is, I, there were, there were some that I suggested two obvious ones that a lot of people were saying on the internet. One iron city stadium, of course, for iron city, City Beer, the big beer company in here in Pittsburgh. Um, that was the one that got the most votes in the poll that I posted. I also posted Permanis Field, you know, for Permanis. Okay, cool. But neither of them was, was chucking up $150 million the way this, this insurance company was. But there were also some really cool suggestions, I thought, from different startups and other companies. Duolingo Stadium, even though Duolingo, I don't think, is making that kind of money as a tech company. They're a very cool app that helped, it helped teach you language and stuff. Um there was Rooney Field at U.S. Steel Stadium. I, I would have liked the idea of keeping part of it a little bit of a Pittsburgh thing, like naming the field and naming, naming the stadium. Those, those are different things. Um, there were some different ones. You know, Seven Springs Stadium. Look, Bob Nutting already shorts the Pirates. You think he's trying to pay that kind of money? Please. Um, Yinzer Stadium. I mean, if every Yinzer pitched in a dollar, we still wouldn't have $150 million. So <laughs> that ain't happening. Um this one was messed up. Someone said Dante Moncrief Stonehands Memorial Stadium. What did Dante Moncrief do to you, Jake? You dropping that name in there. Yes, yes, he wasn't that good. But dang, there's been a lot of bad receivers, and you just go pick on Dante Moncrief. Shame on you. But point being, there are a lot, there are a lot of fun names in there. My okay, my favorite, Ethan Brown. You get points. Duck Hodges Stadium. Tony Serino would be jumping out of his chair if he was on this show. I, I, I might have to like mute him if if he if he could have been on the been on today's show. Um so uh, that that being said, but there's a lot of fun names with it. That's the story, though. It's not that complicated. Um, I'm actually going to be at Heinz Field for the official announcing. They're going to do a whole press thing about it to, uh, on Tuesday after Tuesday afternoon. So do uh, you know? Pay attention to my tomorrow at SteelersNow.com. We'll be there writing about it, talking about it, and uh, if there's anything else that is interesting about it, I'll pull it out, put it in tomorrow's show. We'll, we'll hash it out even more to get through it piece by piece. But uh, point being. It's a new name. I'm not a fan of the new name, but I'm not paying $150 million, am I? So uh, that being that said, I want to get to actual football talk. And there was an interesting football question I got in our hotline that I want to piece out a little bit because it's a little bit later. We'll talk about that in just a sec here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. So don't go anywhere. But first, we got to talk to you guys about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting information, your betting stats, everything you need to get ready to put money down on Major League Baseball because that's the main sport that's going on right now. If you want to make some money, go to go to BetOnline.net. You can check out all the games, all the lines, all the betting odds. The home run derby is coming up. That's always going to be fun. Check out all the ways to make money and the best ways to make 
make money with the best bets at betonline.net. Your continued source for all your sports waiting information from live betting e- to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action when you visit BetOnline, where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're continuing the show here. I I do want to apologize. This show did come out later than I was hoping. I had some home internet problems, so that kind of delayed things a little bit as far as getting the show up, but we got to it. Um, All right, but back to what we were talking about there. There's a lot of stuff about new things this year, not just the new stadium, but also new GM and Omar Khan, new quarterbacks and Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger being gone. But the one mainstay, of course, is Mike Tomlin. He's sticking around. He's going to he, he's he's I said the other day with Jenna, you know, on Friday, we said that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. If just because you think he's been around 15 years and he's had enough. I foresee Mike Tomlin staying staying in Pittsburgh for quite some time uh, longer. But. There's some interesting questions about expectations. And, you know, I've I'm fairly confident about that Mike Tomlin's going to keep the Steelers in contention and maybe even find them a way to be even bigger contenders very sooner rather than later. But this was an interesting question from one of our callers. I believe we've had him on the show. We have Dean from Arizona who wanted to get in on on, on the conversation. Here's Dean. Hey Chris, it's Dean Rodriguez from Prescott, Arizona. Just listening to you and Jenna about um, uh, Friday's episode about uh, the three things that Tomlin has to accomplish, we're well, not asked to, but needs to do. And I wanted to see if you uh, concur with a fourth, and that is uh, have a winning record without Ben Roethlisberger. How important is that this year? Uh, much like how it, um, everybody looked at Brady after he left New England with Belichick. And then uh, a second question or follow-up um, with Tomlin chewing out players. I just want to know if you have any feedback on, on what Bill Coward used to do. Um, I remember him chewing everybody out, but uh, appreciate the show. It's awesome. Um, have a good one. Thank you for your question, Dean. And remember, if you're a fan of the Lockdown Steelers podcast and you want to get your question on the show, just call 412-223-6644. Be sure to leave us a voicemail with your name and where you're from uh, and keep your message to under a minute to help us keep flowing with the show. Um, We'll get you on. If you're international, just send us an email with an MP3 attached, also giving your name and where you're from to lostealerstopicbag at gmail.com. But to answer Dean's question, is Mike Tomlin's fourth coaching goal getting a winning record with, with without Ben Roethlisberger on the, the roster? Okay, first of all, I want to say this. That's kind of the overarching goal. Like, yes, it is a goal to get that. Is it a death nail goal where if he doesn't get it, he's fired? Absolutely not. Shouldn't be that way unless you're a fanatic who thinks that Mike Tomlin just, you've been saying fire Mike Tomlin for the past 15 years since he got here. Um, it's, that's just, that, that's just ridiculous, but I don't think that's what Dean's asking here. That's not what he's, he, he's getting. He's saying, he's saying this is part of the goals. The goals that Jen and I were rolling through were smaller goals about the team in general, that the goals of getting a winning record, that's kind of the overall, that's the overarching. Yes. That, that is something that they want to do, but I do think it's important to note Mike Tomlin has a winning record without Ben Roethlisberger. In, in fact, he's like 18, 15 and one he's played in today's NFL terms, two full 17 game seasons and has a winning record in those, you know, without Ben Roethlisberger since he's taken taken over the Steelers in 2007, he was five, four and one with Mason Rudolph three and three with Charlie batch three and three with Devin Hodges, how he was three and three with Devin Hodges is beyond anyone's comprehension three and two with Landry Jones. How he's three and two with Landry Jones is beyond anyone's comprehension. Dennis Dixon. He was two and one. I didn't even remember that Dennis Dixon won a second game. I remember the Rashad Mendenhall 50 yard uh, walk-off overtime win over out Atlanta. I didn't remember Dennis Dixon getting a second start that he won with Michael Vick. He was two and one with, and the only quarterback that he has a losing record with when they took a start for the Pittsburgh Steelers was Byron Leftwich. He is 0 and one. And that was the game when he legendary scored a touchdown and broke his ribs at the same time by falling on himself things happen but um and i i've always wondered i think that was 2012 i want to say that was uh 
if he doesn't break his ribs, do the Steelers actually win that game? Because the defense kept it. <laughs> that was a crazy game. But anyways, not getting out of reminiscing mode. Um, Mike Tomlin has a winning record without Ben Roethlisberger. And I think it's important to add the distinction that this is a winning record with backup quarterbacks. And this is not to say that Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett aren't going to end up being backup quarterbacks for sure, even though they're looking, they're fighting for the starting position. But these are guys who you went into the season with, with thinking Mason Rudolph, Charlie Batch, Devlin Hodges, Landry Jones, Dennis Dixon, Michael Bick, all these guys, you were looking at them as purely backup quarterbacks. You weren't looking, they, they were not ever in a point going to take the spot of Ben Roethlisberger while he was on the team, unless he was hurt. And that's why Mason Rudolph has the most starts of any other quarterback under Ben, uh, under Mike Tomlin. And uh, he, ha- and again, Mike Tomlin has a winning record with him. So, uh, you know, again, I look at, I look at this and I, and I say Mike Tomlin has done it, but I think it's even going to be even more interesting this year because now it's not like a, Hey, you're jumping in this week to fill in for Ben, or you're jumping in this year to fill in for Ben, you know, in, in the case of 2019, it's a, it's a situation where whoever does win this quarterback battle, this is going to be their offense. This is going, this isn't going to be Ben's office that they're co-opting and trying to learn and trying to adapt to the end. No, this is, this is your offense. It was designed not, maybe not for you specifically in mind. It was designed for this team and this roster and not, for a quarterback that has a completely different skill set than you, which did happen a lot with Ben Roethlisberger. He's, you know, he, especially for, you know, Mason Rudolph, Devin Hodges, a lot of the younger guys that kind of came through uh, towards the end of Ben's career. You know, the offense was drawn up for a quarterback to not be mobile, to not use play action a lot, to, you know, you know, to not be in a situation where they had to use their legs as much. And this is going to be an offense that probably does call upon them to do some of those things. And I think that's, what's going to be really interesting about this, about this season, Dean is Mike Tomlin, getting a winning record if he does i think he will i'm i'm on the train that that the steelers win 9 10 11 if they have a really great run at some point maybe even 12 games uh but i'm on the train that the steelers are going to be a very competitive team this year and not just a team that just goes quietly into the night because ben roethlisberger's gone now if they do if they fold because here's the thing as excited as everyone is about Mitch Trubisky, as excited as everyone is about Kenny Pickett, there is always the chance that these guys just don't work out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It, it happens all the time. It, it, there's plenty. How many teams do you know? Do you remember draft their first round quarterback and everyone's so excited about it and they really want them to win and they're like, oh, this guy's gonna be the future. Jamarcus Russell, Zach Wilson, Sam Darnold. All this. you could just go through name by name. You see it with the Browns with Baker Mayfield. And how often are they wrong? More often than not, they are wrong. Now the Steelers have been have been very fortunate of late because they had Ben Roethlisberger. He carried them, uh, you know, at the quarterback position for 18 years, and that is why he's a Hall of Famer. Is that he, when you're a franchise quarterback who puts up that number, those kind of numbers, and lasts that long and wins multiple Super Bowls, you're going to get that respect. But it took a lot of time between Terry Bradshaw until Ben Roethlisberger for them to find it. It's not a guarantee that they're just going to find those guys. Now, how does this apply when you're the Pittsburgh Steelers? If you want to look objectively and you say, well, wait a second, Chris, I, I do feel that Ben Roethlisberger carried Mike Tomlin, you know, through a lot of those years. And he's the only reason that the Steelers were winning those games. Now, if you've been listening to the show for quite some time, you'll know that I don't think that Josh Taylor, a guest from KKA TV and the 93.7, the fan, he often is professed like, hey, the Steelers have even achieved a lot of their winning records in spite of Ben Roethlisberger when he's been going through his struggles at times, especially in recent years when the defense has had to pick up the slack. But still, I hear you on this and I'm and I feel you that, hey, you know, he does have to show that in an entire season he, he can survive without Ben Roethlisberger. Again, I'll just take you back to 2019 when Ben Roethlisberger didn't win them a single game, and they they ended up with an eight and eight record with Devlin Hodges getting six complete starts, and also chiming in on I think two different other games when Mason Mason Rudolph got hurt. So that's a fourth string undrafted rookie quarterback who ain't even in the NFL anymore. Like it'd be one thing if Devlin Hodges, you know, did what he did for the Steelers and then went somewhere else and was doing it there. He's not even in the NFL right now. He retired. He's, he's doing his duck calling thing. He's got a, po- he's got a podcast. He's using, you know, his success in the NFL to kind of move on with his life. Cause again, he wasn't built to be, you know, a, a NFL starting quarterback. That's why he's not in the NFL right now. Uh, but that being said, 
that's why it's so remarkable that they were three and three with him and that they got an eight and eight record with him getting six starts in that in in those 16 games but i i do think it's important to compare him to contemporaries to look at other people and say hey what did these guys do without their starting quarterbacks because um i think dean alluded to it in his question what about bill belichick with tom brady We'll talk about that and compare Belichick to Brady a little bit, or Belichick to Tom, excuse me, a little bit in just a minute here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But first, we got to talk to you guys about rockauto.com. Y'all know about rockauto.com. It is the number one place for you to go when you want to save time and money when you need parts for your car or truck. Well, you can you can save up to 30%, 50%, even 100% on the types on the, on the types of parts that you that you could get at a chain store or a car dealership by just going to rockauto.com. For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump if you go to it at the chain store is $353. But if you go to rockauto.com right now it's 216. That's makes that's because Rock Auto is a family owned business that they've been serving do it your own service serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. They know the struggle of what it's like to try to do things yourself and they're trying to get you the best prices possible and they're reliably low for every customer. They have everything you, you could need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. Go to explore their easy to use website today and find the solution for your auto part needs by going to rockauto.com right now. And you'll see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliable little prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. We're rounding out the topics. The topic here that uh, was asked by our friend Dean from Arizona. Again, we thank all of Steeler Nation who calls into the show. We get calls from the from Europe. We get calls from California, Arizona, New York, Florida, Oklahoma, everywhere. Steeler Nation is at. We appreciate everyone who watches this show and and listens to this show. And hey, share this show if you're enjoying it. If you, if you want to let people know that that, that you enjoy what, what we talk about here on the show. Please let other people know what we're doing here. We always appreciate that. And don't forget to rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts because that helps us out too. But I, I want to get back to this point here. And we, we brought up Bill Belichick. And Bill Belichick is a very fair comparison, but it's a very similar comparison in how, hey, he lost Tom Brady and he had to adjust. They went and brought in Cam Newton for that first year. And things started off like, okay, in the first couple weeks, but then Cam got hurt or he got COVID and then things just went awry. And Bill Belichick had his first non-double-digit win season since 2002 when the Patriots went 7-9 and nine that year. Um, and, yes, they've won 10 or more games for that long. It's, again, a testament to what the, the Patriots are. However you feel about their cheating and their scandals, they found ways to win, and and, and that that's something that is to be respected, you know, you know, with, with that with that streak that they've had over time. But again, um, when he lost Tom Brady, it took a while to adjust. And granted, there were other things in play there. It was the COVID year. Stephon Gilmore didn't play that year. But it's one of those things where, no matter how great of a coach you are, you're going to run into those type of bumps. You know, there's also the thing to consider. What if it's not just that Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky don't show up and light it up or or, or are these ab- even up these above average quarterbacks that we've been thinking that they will be when they get when they get when they hit the field for the Steelers? What if not only that happens and it's not they're not those guys, but also major players go down and I'm not wishing this on anybody, but a TJ Watt because uh, TJ, you know, Stephon Gilmore was a defensive player of the year. You know, if TJ if TJ Watt goes down, th- I don't care if those guys are great quarterbacks. This team is in trouble without TJ Watt. So if a TJ Watt, a Mika Fitzpatrick, a Cam Hayward, all and any of those happen, it's a huge blow to what the Steelers need to be in this upcoming season. So there's always those variables to happen. But Bill Belichick, not seven and nine in the first year without 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 Tom Brady, ten and seven in the second year with Mac Jones after they drafted him to be quarterback. Um, and also, it's important to note there was 2008 where Tom Brady did go down in the first game of the season. They finished at eleven and five, but they missed the playoffs that year again, showing how kind of weak that the the schedule was because everybody was was getting those t- those types of records. Um, but uh, but yeah, so. That was an inch that was an interesting year, uh, where they with where they were 11 and five and they didn't really get to do much. But um a- again, 
it even Bill Belichick needed an adjustment period to get, get to get along without without Tom Brady. I do think Mike Tomlin's going to need an adjustment period for the things that Ben was able to do with within the system within the Steelers system because yes he was very limited in his mobility especially last year with his arm uh he wasn't the best reader of the field consistently throughout games but what he did do is when he was was when it was the nitty-gritty in the fourth quarter he did have a switch where he would stay in cool mode and everyone else start panicking and that's when you would see him make his best decisions and Mike Tomlin even talked about that being a major asset that he got to coach through I can all I can see a lot of this being some of these younger quarterbacks, they're making, and I think I said this on yesterday's show too, they're, these younger quarterbacks, they're probably going to make more plays with their feet. They're probably going to make bigger, th- you know, longer throws down the field with their arm than Ben Roethlisberger last year. I'm not saying Ben Roethlisberger is prime. That's a whole different story. If, you, if, if Ben Roethlisberger is prime, walk to the door right now, the Steelers team is a, a is a immediate Super Bowl contender, and you're talking about them, you know, going up and banging with the big boys. But they got to see who these guys are going to be um, right now. Uh, when it comes to these these young quarterbacks. And whereas they might do those things more, I also think that they're going to probably make more mistakes than Ben Roethlisberger did la- last year and the year before because Ben Roethlisberger was, knew that, hey, I'm not the show anymore. I'm not the main guy that, 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 that kind of commands everything. I need to make sure that I'm not losing the game and turning the ball over at, at, at a ridiculous rate so that the defense can win the game and so that when they need me in a pinch, I only need to throw a touchdown or lead a touchdown drive or lead a couple field goal drives as opposed to throwing a pick six and the game breaking wide open because that did happen to the Steelers a lot in his final years, uh, You know, especially with some of those playoff games where the Steelers had turnovers that led to big points. But e- neither here nor there. Um, Mike Tomlin, to answer the question further, Dean, he does need to show that there's a that there is a success level without Ben Roethlisberger. Not that it'll say, not that it does just to save his job or anything, because I don't think his job's in jeopardy. But he needs to show it, I think, to to keep these young Steelers in the mode of thought that they are in now. Because I tell you what, I know a lot of people are thinking like, man, the Steelers should have tanked last year so they could get a higher draft pick, and then they could have gotten whoever they wanted, you know, a defensive superstar, whatever, all these things. I still saw major value for guys like Najee Harris, like Pat Fryermuth, like even Chase Claypool. Um, you know, guys being able to, to to go through a very competitive season, gut their way to the playoffs, kind of hang in there for a quarter and a half until they eventually got got wrecked by the Chiefs. But I, I see value in in that, and I think that Mike Tomlin wants to continue growing off that value and saying, "Hey, you know, just because Ben's gone." and he was the face of the team, and he was the franchise quarterback, and he's the future Hall of Famer, that doesn't mean that the standards lessen. The standards still right here, and you guys got to go, go achieve it. And I know that everyone's going to say, well, what about playoff wins? They want to win playoff games, but they're going to need better play in those playoff games when they get there. Um, I think this is going to be a very interesting opportunity for the Pittsburgh Steelers to see who sets the tone on the team, who steps up in those leadership roles, not just vocally and who's yelling the most in the locker room or at practice or anything like that, but the person who sets the example on the field and gets people to follow them because they're setting the example on the field. That will be, I think, a big factor to Mike Tomlin getting a winning record without Ben Roethlisberger in 2022. And remember, he already does have a winning record over 30 four games the equivalent of two seasons that he's played without ben roethlisberger already so that being said thank you dean for your question thanks to everyone for tu- for tuning in let me know what you think about acra shore stadium about that being it and the way that it, the way that it happened um and also let me know if you have a better idea for the stadium name i went over some that were listed here but it's always fun to talk about that um do check us out on the locked on steelers podcast on apple spotify google podcast odyssey youtube uh subscribe to our youtube channel to get all of our daily monday through friday episodes you can also listen to this when you listen to the show on apple Podcasts. go on apple Podcasts, rate us five stars Give us a positive comment. Do both at the same time and get you a special shout at the end of the show. Thanks again. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at SteelersNow.com. I'll be back on your screens and in your ears tomorrow talking more about your Pittsburgh Steelers.